Hey everyone, this is a tutorial on can we use GitHub without the command line. Okay, can we do that? Can we do it all inside github.com? Let's quickly go over what the heck is GitHub. GitHub is simply just a place where we can store files and these are specifically made to store code files for developers, okay? So it's developers storing code files. You can store other files there, but it's mainly for developers. So Git is actually a program that's really good at keeping track of files in an organized way, okay? We'll just leave it at that for now. All right, before I show you github.com, let's look at the very basics of Git. We have repository, branch, and commit. Okay, repository is just basically your project. You can organize it however you want. Uh, maybe it's your front end files for your website. Typically, it's one software app per repository, but you can have multiple apps inside one repository. Uh, and then repository, we have branches. Okay, and there's usually a default branch. You can think of it like a tree. You can branch off of like the trunk. So you can think of the default branches like your trunk and you could branch off more and more and then we can merge these changes back into the default branch. Okay, what are these changes we're talking about? We're talking about commits, okay? Commits, you can think of just our changes and then each commit is like a snapshot of the entire repo repository at a given point in time. We'll get into this more, but here's our the, here are the basics. All right, so in github.com, this is what a repository view looks like. This is my username, and this is the repository name. So class quiz, that was a previous tutorial. You can check it out here. And you can see the files here. You can see the latest commit, and then you can see the branches here, okay? So, so notice it says main here. I clicked on this main dropdown, and it has the different branches. So this is, remember, my default branch is what I'm actually showing all the files here on the default branch. And it says here, find or create a branch. So in here, I can type in a new branch name and I can branch off of main. Or if I clicked Michael's edits, I could then type in a word here to branch off of Michael's edits. But we'll get into the demo part and I'll show you that as well. And then I'm on the main branch. It shows I have 13 commits. So that's 13 different unique changes that I've made to this repository that I've committed. And if I click on this 13 commits button, all right, so after you click that, it'll take you to the main branches commits page. As you can see, there's commits for each of these rows and associated messages. So every time you commit, you need to make a message. And each time you commit, it also creates a unique alphanumeric code here. See, 7203, right? And then each of these is called a SHA hash. I think it's called SHA-1 is the specific algorithm it uses. Basically, it's a unique alphanumeric code for each of your changes to your repository or branch here. So that means you can go back in time and browse files at 9BF uh, here, or you can go to this one, or you can go back in time and look at this one. So each one of these is a snapshot. Okay, remember that in a point in history. And then quick reminder here to avoid trouble, let's always make commits on a branch, okay? You can think of it conceptually as a branch and I have commits on that branch and then branches live in a repository. I can create any number of branches uh, on a repository. Uh, and then there's always the uh, default branch. Remember that. Okay, let's get into the demo here. Okay, so here's the live demo of how to use GitHub without the command line. Okay, so if you're just in the UI here, uh, you're on a repository, you can see branches, I showed you that, um, and then you see the files here. So you can edit the files, you can add new files, uh, you can branch off of things all within the uh, GitHub dot com here. So let's say I want to modify this class quiz. See, there's three answers here. I want to add a fourth one. So I don't want to edit just straight on the default branch. Usually you want to branch off of the default branch. So All right, so maybe I'll name it Mike's Edits 2. So by just typing this here, um, this little thing comes up here. It says create branch from main. So I want to branch off of main. So I click that and now I'm on Mike's Edits 2. Cool. cool. So then I click readme file because I want to edit that. I want to add this fourth answer. I click the pen. Okay, go here and I want to paste in my uh, answers there. Okay, so here's git commit, git add are the two answers I want to add. Commit changes, remember you always need a commit message. So, okay, so I put add answer for question four and I'm gonna commit directly to the edits two branch. Remember the commit is the unique alphanumeric code, the SHA-1 hash for this uh, actual uh, edit that I'm making. I'm just making this basically two line change to this file, but it's gonna be a unique commit in this repository. So then I commit it. And now you can see it generated 414 ADU 17 as my commit. So I can click that commit if I want, look at it, you can see what changed, and you can see, uh, yeah. And you can see the actual commit there. 
Great, so let's do a pull request. Now I want to actually add this to my main branch. So main does not have this change, right? So then I can compare and pull request and add question for answer four, create a pull request. And then usually your developers or whoever will review these changes, right? By going to files changes and they can add comments like this is not right or whatever they want to comment. And then you can have conversations inside the pull request before it's actually merged. But my changes look good right now, I think. So I'm just gonna merge this pull request. So what did I just do? I merged my branch of Mike's edits two into the main branch. Now I click on this main branch and you can see now my edits are in number four here. Okay, and then you can add files, you can go to files, you can, uh, yeah, this is for command line things. But yeah, most of what I just did is kind of what you do if you modify things just within GitHub here. Obviously there's more things that you can do. But yeah, I highly recommend that you don't actually write a lot of code inside github.com. You want to actually be using an integrated development environment, IDE, to write your code, make sure it works, and then you'd use the command line tools of Git to push these changes up to GitHub. So then you'd see those here. But if you're just making little readme changes here and there, maybe it's uh, some configuration changes, maybe one line here and there, then github.com works great and it's super fast. So, so I hope that helped for those that you know, use github.com and want a, a quick uh, tutorial on how to use it just within uh, the interface uh, here. Thanks a lot.